dive. To dive beneath the surface and into the minds and hearts of your favorite celebrities and pop culture icons. Welcome to Up and Adam. Hey guys, what's up? You're watching Up and Adam. My name's Adam Noel. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm the guy bringing you guys all the weekly interviews and recaps from your favorite celebrities and pop culture influencers. But for those of you who do know me, you know that that's not why we're always here, right? Guys, if you haven't already, go ahead, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell, as well as subscribing to all Master of Blackjack channels, because this is a TLC interview that is going to blow you guys away. This is a pairing of two people who we didn't necessarily think would ever happen. With that, I'm not going to speak anymore on it. I want them to speak. So let's welcome Andrew and Liz. Andrew and Liz from TLC's 90 Day. Well, technically, Liz, you're not from 90 Day Fiance. For anyone who's living under a rock, can you please just bring us up to speed as to which show you were on and who you were paired with? I um, am off this off a spinoff of 90 Day Fiance, and it's the single life. And I um, was dating Big Ed. Big Ed. So. Okay. So I'm sure that was interesting in itself. And I've definitely watched you on the show. You had quite the experience. And, you know, I really have to give it to you. I've spoken with Andrew before, as I just said, when we weren't recording. And I, I mean, he was just completely open about his experience on the show. And for you, I was watching you the same way I was watching Andrew. And it seemed like you were really trying to put your heart out there. You were on the show with good intentions. It wasn't a game for you. You weren't trying to get the celebrity out of it. Am I wrong? Oh, no, you're you're pretty much nailing it. I completely was in it for all the right intentions and definitely got my heart just shattered at the end of it. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. But I feel like it's onward and upward and there's always somebody for everyone. It's just a matter of finding that person and you could potentially be there. But I wanted to ask you, you know, there were articles back in May that said that you were still trying to see if maybe you could potentially restore that relationship. And then from there, it's drastically changed. Now you have a petition on your Instagram and your bio about Big Ed trying to get him off of TLC for some of his alleged wrongful acts and just the person he is. Can you speak on that at all? Yeah, I, I can. Um, I've actually never spoke on it the way that I'm about to right now. It is not my petition. Um, there are a lot of people that came forward and created this petition. And with everybody having my back and kind of after the official breakup and the last thing that he kind of did to me to hurt me um I started realizing a lot of things saying things out loud like when having conversations to the point where my head would like kind of jolt back and I'm like wow that wasn't okay there's a lot of things that I've shared that's happened and I'm kind of just at this place in my life where I'm kind of just like moving forward but I didn't create the petition. I felt with everybody having my back, it was only right thing for me to do, like sharing it myself, not right. like hiding from it. I do still stand by the petition because there's a lot of things that have happened that's not been shared. The show was definitely downplayed on the aspects of nobody really, it, it wasn't, I'm not the star of the show. It's not my journey. It's Ed's journey. So it falls a lot into like his questions, what's going on with him. I don't have like the, the questions where they're sitting there in the chair all day, answering them a lot more would have came out that way. Every breakup, if, if someone had asked me what had happened, they would have gotten a whole different side of it. So like thinking and saying things out loud with my friends and stuff they're all like yeah that's what we tried to tell you it just it wasn't until there's a lot of conditioning and narcissism that went into that too and um a lot of me making excuses and wanting to try to make it work it's just it's I've learned a lot throughout the process of it and it was very easy I don't know how to explain why I just wanted him, why I wanted to be with him, but it had a lot of him like messing with my mind. So okay. yeah, I don't think he, he, um, I think he definitely takes advantage of a lot of, a lot of um, vulnerable situations. 
Okay. And you don't think he should necessarily, his character on the show should be necessarily celebrated or at least continue to be celebrated because that's a huge Uh, platform. TLC is a big, you're giving a platform to somebody who this petition is saying doesn't necessarily deserve it. And, you know, again, I didn't want to make this all about Big Ed. I kind of want to just move forward a little bit. Andrew, yeah. when we spoke, you said that your experience with the production and the show wasn't necessarily what you thought, and you didn't have the best experience. Am I correct? I, I really didn't have the best experience on the show. Uh, just the way in which it's filmed and how they contrive each scene and set up their narrative. And the, the, the results and consequences of that, uh, I don't know, it's pretty heavy. And I would advise against, you know, people doing it in the future. Uh, but yeah, I actually, I think Liz and I had uh, similar experiences in a way. Uh, our, our partner really wanted to be famous and really wanted to uh, continue their, their fame and kind of bolster, you know, bolster their name. Uh, and ultimately we, uh, went along with that and got, you know, stuck on the line. Right. Well, now I guess the interesting part is, and nobody knows this yet. Um, master of blackjack who you have both met, I've met him in person as well in Los Angeles, hilarious person. I was about to say the gender, but that's the secret too. Um, hilarious person. Um, he, ordered cameos from each one of you now i just watched them again before i came on here liz can you tell me a little bit about the cameo that you received the cameo request for master of blackjack yeah it was completely random um i got this cameo and i'm reading it and he had also sent me a message so it kind of shed light to who andrew was and make clear I haven't seen Andrew's season or anything like that so I had to do a little bit of googling um I definitely waited to the last minute to get my cameo in because I just was not expecting I just wasn't I was just kind of shocked did you feel like you're being punked for a second for a second yeah yeah I thought I was being punked I'm like okay like who's this person they're pretty they're decently descriptive in the cameo that they wanted so I'm like what am I doing here so I did a little bit of googling and I'm like okay cool I mean I've there's already been a couple accusations of Andrew being in my life which he wasn't in my life at all and then I'm like screw it I'm gonna do the cameo I'm gonna have some fun with it and then we'll see where it goes from there okay Okay. That's just my, my side of how it happened. All right. Well, there's always two sides to the story. Well, technically they say three years, this other person's in the one in between, but Andrew, can you give us your side? Because you also received a cameo request from Master of Blackjack. It was very similar. I did think that, uh, you know, Blackjack was uh, pulling a prank or something like that, but uh, I had known Blackjack for a little bit uh, in the, in the DMs and through conversation there. So um, I don't know. I trusted him. Uh, I trusted him enough to uh, to do the to do the cameo. And uh, I actually didn't watch Liz's season, just like she didn't really watch mine. So I actually had to do some research as well. Actually, after doing the research, was happy to do the cameo and see what happened. That's funny, um, interesting too, because. A lot of people have speculated who Master of Blackjack is, and some people have thought that it was Paul or even Big Ed or all of these different people, which we all know that's not true. Um, And what a persuasive person to be able to pull this off and not only get you both to respond to the cameo request, but he orchestrated this meeting, am I correct, in San Diego? Yeah. Uh, And he participated in it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He set pretty much the whole thing up. Yeah. So. Okay. He so he's on. He, he needs to be a millionaire matchmaker and not. We're on a different show. He needs to explore his options. <laughs> yeah. He's got. A, he's got a lot of businesses going on, and he definitely had some fun with this one. So. He's a hobbies. Okay. So when you both met up. Did you have any expectations? Again, I think it's actually great. The fact that I I cover a lot of TLC, I cover a lot of Bravo, and it's never good for people to come into a situation meeting after really investing their time into the other person's storylines or how the show portrays them. Because as you both know, 
editing is everything and they can make you look completely different than who you actually are to the core. So did either one of you go in with expectations um, into this meeting? And Andrew, I'll start with you. Um, I was a, a little bit concerned, though I, you know, I know Blackjack a little bit and trusted him. I was a bit concerned about, uh, you know, who am I going to be meeting on the other side? I wasn't very familiar with the uh, season. And so all I had was a broad sense of what I saw on, on Google there. Uh, so a little bit nervous about, uh, about the person I would be meeting. Okay. And Liz? I was a little nervous. Um, also, I think the hardest part is people going into this. I knew like people are going to like talk. So I almost backed out like last minute um, of not going to hang out. And it's just because people think that they have a right to validate their, they make their own opinions and stuff like that with this franchise or like it kind of like, I don't know, just people talk. So right. I almost didn't want to do it. Um, but I went ahead and went through and I met him and um, I just, I didn't know, like he knows master at blackjack and all of a sudden like there's been a little bit of communication what am i doing should i go meet them and finally i just said i'm gonna do it and it was a really fun night yeah but that's awesome that's awesome to hear especially because you know it's fair your concerns you you are a single mom you know you're going and meeting two people who you don't know it's almost like a blind date except you have seen andrew and you know that he was affiliated with the show so that makes it maybe a little bit more comfortable but at the end of the day you're just a, a woman walking into this vulnerable situation that could be strange i mean the first time i met master blackjack I was told to meet at a certain location and I'm walking around looking and all of a sudden I hear, are you Adam? And I look around and there's like six people. I didn't even see who was the person who said it. And he starts laughing and I was like, Oh crap. He wouldn't show me a photo of him. So I, I feel like I was Liz going into a blind date when I went and met with him. So it, it is kind of strange, but it did turn out the same way. You know, it, it he has the ability to make it a comfortable situation. And I, it sounds he like he made it was. very, very, very comfortable. Even when I brought up my concerns last minute, he was, Hey, if, if, if you don't, it's okay. If you don't want to come, it's completely okay. And he gave me the location. It was in such a public area. He made it so, so comfortable for me. So, yeah. yeah. And you, if I, if I'm correct and correct me if I'm wrong, um, you live in San Diego. Yeah, I, I live in San Diego. I've been here on and off the, the, well, like how old's my daughter? Uh, the last seven, eight years I've been here on and off for the last eight years. So, and I'm still currently here. And Andrew, you do not. So what did it take for you to get to San Diego? Actually, it was uh, just an hour and a half plane ride. So it's not too bad a flight down to San Diego. I live in Northern California in Sacramento. So it must you had to have had some excitement there in order to be like, okay, I'm going to take this plane ride. I, I am currently single. Maybe there's something that could come out of this. You don't really know much about Liz other than the fact that she was on a show and that she's a young mother. So this is kind of everyone's just taking chances. Exactly. I was very excited, actually, because I thought that, uh, I don't know, from talking to Blackjack and from uh, him talking to, to Liz there, and from my early uh, uh, conversations with Liz online there, it seemed like we had a lot of common experiences. So I was, ex I was excited to, to sit and talk about our experience with TLC. Mm -hmm. The, the fan <laughs> Liz's All face right now. Well, because that's kind of what it, like, my expectations going in this was, like, having someone to be able to talk to about my experience, not so much as, like, not so much as, like, a, like, a, like, a date or anything like that. I was mainly looking forward to, like, just someone who I know that can relate, because Master Blackjack did such a good job of communicating for the both of us, and pairing us up, and, like, thinking that would be a good match for, for anything, but yeah, I, I was really looking forward into having really good conversation. That was like the first thing where my mindset went into any of this. Now, did he explain to either one of you as to why in his mind, when there are hundreds of TLC cast members, why he chose you two to pair up? I don't know. I, 
Yeah, I mean, I think Andrew might be better at explaining it than I would. Andrew, spotlight's on you, friend. I, I don't know. I, he, he told me that it involved a lot of, you know, intoxication early, early in the wee hours of the morning. So it could have been any <laughs> ever. That's great. That one out. Okay. Well, and not to bring up the past, Andrew, but you know, one of the things within your relationship that I feel like, and again, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that maybe didn't work out was the fact that you want to be a family man in the future. You want to have a family, you love kids. And that was not something, well, at least Amira was on that path, but it was something that she sort of changed her mind about last minute. And as for Liz, Liz obviously has a daughter, so she's a mom. I uh, I was excited to uh, to meet uh, for for one reason is that uh, I have a I have a thirteen uh, year old sister, and so my thirteen year old sister was excited because she had seen Liz on the show and wanted to uh, pass along a gift, and so uh-huh. uh, yeah. Uh, I guess in that way, uh, was very excited to uh, to uh, talk about uh, our experiences with uh, with with children there, and uh, you know, shared experiences with the youth. All right. So with that, I'm going to uh, move forward. When you decided to come from Sacramento to San Diego, how long, Andrew? Are you there? Oh, okay. When you yeah. decided to come from Sacramento to San Diego, how long? did you anticipate staying and how long did you actually stay if you don't mind i uh i anticipated leaving uh, i i anticipated staying three nights and i ended up staying four nights i stayed the extra night in order to uh look for apartments i'm actually thinking about moving down to san diego uh and living there for uh periods of time all right. Well, was that in, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm curious because anyone watching is going to wonder, does that have anything to do with this meeting or were you thinking about moving to San Diego before that? I was actually thinking about moving to San Diego before that. In fact, I was coming down. I already had some tours already planned at some apartment complexes. So, um, I was already thinking about moving down to uh, San Diego and, uh, it, it was nice to, to meet Liz because, you know, now I have a 90 day, a 90 day friend down there that you can kind of trust or rely on. All right. Well, if you guys are comfortable with talking about this, obviously, again, Master of, Jack, Master of Blackjack paired you together. Um, the meeting went better than expected. I saw the video, you know, Liz is combing your hair. You guys are making Rapunzel jokes. You guys seem like you had fun banter back and forth. Do you see this in the future? And it's, obviously way too soon to tell but in your just knowing like good vibes positive vibes could you see this in the future going anywhere more than friends um I had a really good time and honestly we hung out almost every single day that he was here so it was a lot of fun being able to talk and um I felt really safe with Andrew. I felt like there was a lot of trust that was built right, like not right away, but like, so we had dinner. Then the next day we had lunch and the next day we had dinner and then the next day we had breakfast. So like we had like by like the third or fourth day of hanging out, I, I definitely, I like him a lot. However, I am, I'm, I'm, probably i don't want to like exactly say 100 percent, but i'm actually going to most likely be moving out of san diego by the end of the month so that can put a huge i'm probably gonna be moving out of the state of california so it's very hard to say where anything could go um but i definitely know if i'm here in san diego and he moves out here 100 percent. like definitely want to you know have a friendship and then we'll start there <laughs> And see where it goes. No, that's fair. Yeah. I, I was living in Los Angeles a year ago, and we all know California right now is insane. The prices are just rising and rising, and then it just everything going on. It's a hard state to live in right now, so I completely yeah. understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Andrew, for you, would a long-distance relationship be anything that you would ever entertain again? Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, I no. I think that uh, it. I think that 
both of us are in a place of like lacking trust in in a lot of ways when it comes to uh, getting into those kind of relationships. And I think right now we're kind of just building a friendship and uh, a long distance relationship uh, would be would be kind of tough. I think I think it'd be a tough thing to manage. And so <laughs> I don't think we're both. Uh, I don't think I don't know. I don't think either one of us are eager to jump into a uh, long distance relationship. That's fair. Listen, it has to start somewhere. And like you said, it's building trust. It's coming off of having trust issues. Um, if I know that you didn't watch Liz's time on the show, but watching it, you know, she's obviously been through so much already. So I'm sure that takes time to, you know, come back from anyway. So for both of you, I just, uh, I commend both of you guys for, you know, going through this process on the show. And I know how you feel, Andrew, as far as like not recommending this experience to anyone. But for you, Liz, if you were on the other side of the spectrum, I guess, and you were in Big Ed's shoes and you were the one who was doing the interviews and who TLC was sort of favoring in that moment, because like you said, it was his journey. If it was a Liz's journey, would you ever recommend this experience to anyone who was looking into TLC's 90 day or any sort of spinoff? Um... <laughs> You know, everybody's experience is different. And I really put my whole heart into this. So I feel like if your attentions are good and pure and you're not going to be gaslighted by your partner at the end, um, I don't want to tell people yes and I don't want to tell people no. For, for me, I am still hurt from it all. So yeah, I want to say don't, don't do it. Um, in a different scenario, like my, my roommate, he, uh, man, if he was ever on 90 day, he would have a story. And I was telling Andrew a little bit about it, but I, he was like, I saw what you went through and I feel like this person's the love of my life. I would never want to apply for the show because I, I, I saw you break down, but at the same time, like I look at them and I can tell that both him and his fiance are so madly in love. I don't think anything can destroy them. So I think, if your intentions are pure for it, go for it. Or if you're, it, as long as you know what you're going in for it, your intentions don't even have to be pure. You can find a partner. If you're, you're doing it for fame or whatever, as long as you guys are on the same page, nobody deserves to be hurt in the end or gaslighted. Right. So, And you said if you know, you know, if your intentions are good and you're pure and you know what you're going into, but really there's not any way to necessarily unless you have a reality tv background to know what you're getting yeah into. so like moving forward i if i were to even tune i don't even think i'd want to if the opportunity was present oh i would know how to play the game so well but <laughs> you know yeah. i just it's just i'm still so hurt from yeah. it that yeah i you know, an incident happened just yesterday that I won't speak about. Uh, I, I don't want to like ruin anything, but um, I got a call from someone and I just completely shut down because it just brought back all these emotions and an experience from the show of just someone asking me to do something. And I'm like, no, like, so it's, I don't know. I can't, I can't tell people to do it or not do it. It's just, right. I didn't know what I was doing when I did it. Have you had people, and this goes to both of you, Andrew, you said, I believe I asked you this before, have you had people sort of notice you from the show? And you said that you live in a, a sort of smaller community where people do kind of know you and your business. Um, Liz, for you, have you had that same sort of notoriety? Yeah, um, I get noticed. I have a lot of people who adore me. I have a lot of people who... Uh, or a lot of people are so respectful, but I have a lot of people still come into my restaurant uh, because of the show and it's where I work and stuff like that. Uh, so I do have a lot of people come in for that, but for, for a while, it just, it wasn't good for, for a little bit, not because people were hating on me. It was people hating on my choices of who I was dating and his image on what people are calling him in the media right now or him looking for people my age and stuff, that nasty word. I got a lot of like 
people wanting to call CPS and stuff on me or calling my job. So it was oh. bad for a little bit. And then now it's just, now everyone just, it's, it, there's nothing bad going on anymore. It's simmered down. Yeah. We've actually had a lot of people boycott the restaurant because they didn't support that. They didn't support him, him. Oh. So then once we got rid of all his stickers and everything like that, everyone was like, good. And that's like around the time when the petition came out and everything like that too. So, um, yeah. This is a lot. Okay. Well, yeah. Andrew and Liz, I know that both of your time is valuable. So I just want to, I mean, I want to say, I appreciate you guys jumping on with me. I'm so excited to see what happens of this budding friendship for those of you guys who are watching. We'll use it as friendship for now. Yes. Friendship Please. for now. I'm Who knows? It could be enemies in like three weeks. We don't hey, know. Real. Andrew, watch your back, friend. Watch your <laughs> back. But she went Beautiful. from brushing your hair at the at the dinner table to she could be your worst nightmare. She just said it. <laughs> I didn't Perfect. mean it exactly. Like no, I'm that, kidding. Though. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, thanks no. again. Appreciate it. Yes, of course. And guys, uh, thank you so much again, like I said, for your time. I can't wait to see what happens. I'm going to be posting this interview at the same time that Master of Blackjack is posting the cameos. So I think it's going to be really fun. It's going to kind of be hilarious what people do and what they say and how they run with this because you both know how this works. Everyone all of a sudden is going to be pairing you two together. Yeah. Now you guys are in a relationship. You're on the fast track to marriage. Andrew's moving to San Diego. It's going to go wild. So with what you just said is the whole reason why I almost backed out last minute. And I'm happy I did not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you also have to, you know, and I think mm -hmm. I can't say this because, you know, my fiance and I, we were offered to be on a reality TV show that's been on for almost nine seasons on Bravo. And we made the conscious choice as a couple that we didn't think we could handle it and the scrutiny that came with it. So we decided not to do it because we didn't feel like we were strong enough to do it. And for you, I think, again, I just commend how strong you've been throughout this process and your journey. And the fact that you even took a chance and you didn't let all of that backlash stop you from just living your life and getting to know new people, making new memories and taking chances. So there's a lot to be said for that. Exactly. Yeah. I, I completely agree. I think that uh, it's nice to get out there and uh, share, a, share, you know, good conversation with people who've had similar experiences and kind of build those bonds and those friendships. And Liz was, uh, it was a great surprise. And, and we, we really, we hung out a lot. And we had a lot of great conversation and I'm actually excited to hang out again sometime. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, Liz and Andrew, with that, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you again so much. And I will be in touch. I look forward to hearing from you in the future or speaking with you. And I can't wait to see what the comments do. Get ready. Yeah. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. All right, guys. That was a great conversation with Andrew and Liz from TLC's 90 Day and The Single Life. Obviously, we know that Andrew was paired up with Amira and that experience did not go well. And we know that Liz was paired up with Big Ed. This wasn't the show pairing them up, but these started off as organic relationships that just did not work out. From what we're hearing from both of them, they both went in with good intentions, but at the end of the day, they didn't end up with who originally, who we originally saw them with. Now, since Master of Blackjack paired them up through Cameo, who knows what's going to happen with this budding friendship, we're going to call it. We look forward to hearing more and seeing more. And with that, if you guys haven't already, go ahead, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, Up and Adam, and don't forget to set your notification bell because you don't want to miss anything we have coming up. That, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching Up and Adam.